Okay, what is going on CyperX Advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to another CyperX YouTube video breakdown. As always, if you're interested in learning about cryptocurrency, commodities, indices, foreign exchange, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. In today's video breakdown, I'm going to share with you all my strategy surrounding a dollar cost average position that I took on Casper, buying in at a low, properly learning how to dollar cost average, again, giving you guys some extreme gems on liquidity manipulation, how bank and institutions operate surrounding trading against retail methodologies. Then I'm also going to cover some fundamentals for you all, reading an article from Wells Fargo for you all, as well as an article about LCX covering why it is that I'm bullish on LCX long term. So make sure that you guys stick around for this YouTube video breakdown. Don't forget that this week sometime I'm going to announce the Casper token giveaways. I will directly message each and every single winner on Twitter via private DMs. If you did win the Casper giveaway, again, I will be announcing those in a YouTube video and I will post the winners on my Twitter page. So make sure that you guys stick around, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you guys don't already follow me on Twitter, make sure that you do so because this week I will be announcing the 1000 Casper token giveaway. All right, so make sure that you guys stick around for that. So without further ado, let's get started in today's video breakdown. So before I get into the analysis on the actual trade entry, let's go back and talk about why it is that I think that if price breaks this high on Casper, we're going to see a significant bullish reversal and why this high is designated for me as a potential area that we would need to break to see a bullish reversal. All right, so let's just backtrack a couple of sessions. You guys can see here, this was one daily candlestick right here. Okay, so we have three sessions, Asia, London, New York. This was another daily candlestick, another daily candlestick, and another daily candlestick. So we have one, two, three, four daily candlesticks that we're gonna track back in price action to kind of go over what happened, all right? So first I wanna divert your attention to the manipulation region during these two Asia sessions. Again, which stood out to me to take a position during this current New York session, what happened in price action. We can see that during each manipulation region, there was a lot of manipulation and liquidity grabs. We can see here during this Asia session, we had early sellers and people that had buy stops above these highs that were willing to buy if Casper price action popped back above these highs. And again, you can see that that took place during the manipulation region. Same thing during London, we have early sellers and people that were willing to buy in the form of buy stops above these highs if price broke above these highs during London session, okay? So now we can see fast forward to the next trading day during the daily candlestick wick creation or when the daily candlestick wick was created because we know that the daily candlestick wick is usually created during Asia session and that the meat in the body of the candlestick is created during London and New York session. We can see that this is the daily candlestick wick that wicked through the previous Asia session area of liquidity and then completely reversed, enticing people to buy but what were the banking institutions doing? They were coming back for that liquidity that they left behind during the manipulation region. And as you can see, extending this manipulation region out, all of this liquidity in the form of traps and grabs took place during the manipulation region, which is why you guys can see how lethal the strategy here at CyperX is that we teach, okay? So now we can see that this most significant A to B move, again, the most significant lower high after the grab of liquidity is this lower high that took place during New York session. So logically speaking on Casper, what would we need to do to see any type of bullish reversal or confirm bullish momentum? What would we need to do? Can you answer that question? We would need to break this A to B move or this current bearish leg that we are operating in. So properly dollar cost averaging into a position, if we are going to come and stem higher and break this bullish leg, I wanted to situate myself on the proper side of the market. So coming down here into this actual trade setup and why we were able to take a nice bullish position on Casper was because we see here, this B move was a potential grab of liquidity beneath what? Previous New York session manipulation ranges. Here we can see New York session had buy positions in, New York session pushed price action down to liquidate early buyers in their manipulation region, and then they rejected a psychological level that led to a fractal break in structure. As you can see, this move here broke a previous fractal market structure high. So we can classify this as a bullish reversal or at least a temporary bullish reversal where if this low holds, now you can see price started to create higher highs and higher lows or during every single session, the market maker showed us a willingness to grab liquidity from lows and stem higher. Grab liquidity from lows and stem higher, okay? So this is currently respecting fractal bullish order flow. 
So to properly dollar cost average into this position, all we simply did was we paid attention to where the bank and institutions previous to this New York session purchased from, which was right here. As you can see, this New York session manipulated price action in their manipulation region, early buyers, okay? And then they came back for those buyers, grabbed that liquidity, and then stemmed higher. So all we simply did was we highlighted this area, extended that over, and said to ourselves, if this is a new A to B move, extending that over, if we wanna get in on the moving train on what the bank and institutions are doing, we're gonna be buying at a discount. Simply all we did was we waited for that 70 to 79% retracement, price came down into that area, we put in a buy position, and as you guys can see again, fractally, what is the market makers telling us? The market makers are telling us that they wanna grab liquidity from lows right here and go higher, okay? So this is fractal bullish order flow. Now again, logically speaking, this price action is not guaranteed. We are not guaranteed to continue this uptrend, but if we are, what we would like to see here at CyperX is this high get taken out because logically, this is the last lower high that price created after the market grabbed liquidity and stemmed lower, creating a new swing low, okay? I know that there's a lot of jargon on the charts right now, but as you guys can see, I trade based off of logic. The market in this area was showing us the willingness to grab liquidity from lows to the left-hand side and then break fractal structure, creating brand new highs. After that, the market created a significant higher low after the grab liquidity and grab liquidity from lows and stemmed higher. So now we can see that to get on the right side of the market, buyers are more prevalent in this market right now than sellers. So if we wanna get in on the moving train, we need to properly dollar cost average at lows after liquidity is swept from those lows. So we can see here, there's a set of lows in the manipulation region prior to New York session where we could possibly see early buyers, right? The market makers push down into that region, grab liquidity and tap into an area of interest where the bank and institutions from New York session bought from the previous day. So all we simply did again to reiterate was we took our Fibonacci from the low to the new high, extended that over and took a 79 to 70% discount entry on Casper, which is now currently sitting us in profit. I tweeted to you guys, can we hold above the six cent psychological level if you guys don't follow me on Twitter? I update price analysis constantly on my Twitter, sending out bullish and bearish targets. I think that if we hold above this six cent region, we will trail up and break this high. If we break this high on Casper, most likely we are going to traverse back to the upside. However, my downside targets, I'm still pessimistic on those, which are anywhere between five to four and a half cents. All right. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that breakdown. Again, if you guys have trading view, set an alarm at this high, because if we break this high on Casper, I think that Casper has the potential to come back to eight cents to possibly even 10 cents. And this psychological level sits at around, let's just say, let's round this off to 0675, the 0675 psychological level. Okay. So let's mark that off right here. Boom. All right. So if we can break this high at 0675, if we break this high, then most likely we are going to traverse back to the upside and Casper is going to start this uptrend. Now, something else to be mindful of is if we go to the four hour where we are at on the four hour discounted time frame, where we can see here, let me get rid of these session indicators so it doesn't look confusing to you guys. All right. We can see that Casper did break a high here and created a new swing high. Now the major question is, especially surrounding all these moon boy price predictions on YouTube, I've seen everybody take their Fibonacci and draw their little Fibonacci, right? They get this little thing right here and their Fibonacci extensions take them all the way into like freaking $5. Okay. That's not realistic. Again, Fibonacci tools are utilized to present discounted price opportunities for you and to determine where proper discounted price is. The market makers do not respect Fibonacci numbers. That is all a hoax. And it is somebody trying to sell you pipe dreams. Do not pay attention to that stuff, okay? Fibonacci extension numbers are not guaranteed, even though that all of these influencers out there will constantly show you uh, a Fibonacci retracement and an extension and it always getting tapped and met in the market, okay? That is not realistic. If you base your trades around that, you're gonna be sitting there doing things backwards, time and time again in the market, most likely losing money like the rest of the retail herd. We can see here extending from the low to the high that we are in around 85 to 90 percent discount so the question is is can casper hold this low again i showed you guys on the previous youtube video if we break this low there's a lot of liquidity from all the buyers that took place when we had that listing from when we had that listing in march 
on Casper where we had this bullish impulsive move, okay? So the question is, is can we hold this low? And if not, most likely the bearish targets that I've put out to you guys of anywhere between four and a half cents to three, maybe three and a half cents will most likely come into fruition where the market makers will will dump into this area to grab this liquidity one last time before then going higher. So not financial advice. I have capital set aside for if that price target comes into fruition. And if not, I'm slowly dollar cost averaging at these low levels as of right now. You guys just saw the breakdown that I did for you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this breakdown. Most likely if we hold this low and Casper does appreciate in value from this level, I like this Fibonacci extension because look where it takes us. Again, a realistic price target. If we get a reversal from these levels and this level holds on Casper, look at the 200% Fibonacci extension comes back into these areas again that 22 to 23 cent psychological level where most likely we will have a triple top formation building liquidity and eventually i'm expecting casper to completely smash through that psychological level of 23 to 22 cents and come up into that 36 cent psychological level to attack these highs all right so let's be mindful of these price targets bullish and bearish on casper and properly dollar cost averaging on the way down or the way up not fumbling in, not chasing bullish and bearish candlesticks, regardless if you trade my strategy or not, making sure that you're not just buying because you feel like it or buying because Coinbase or Uphold or whatever exchange you're utilizing gave you some type of notification. Get TradingView, learn how to read the charts properly so that way your portfolio isn't dwindling away, right? Like the rest of the retail herd. Okay, for anybody that's interested in learning my strategy, the link is in the description down below. You guys can always reach out to me, schedule a Zoom call, ask any questions that you might have of me. Let's go over to the fundamental aspect in an article that I found extremely interesting on the wellsfargo.com website. They talk about understanding cryptocurrencies. Again, this is coming directly from the Wells Fargo page. I'm just some influencer on YouTube telling you guys that you're part of the 3% population that own cryptocurrency, but let's read this article so that way I can further prove to you all that I'm not making these numbers up. Understanding cryptocurrency, I highlighted a couple of areas for you guys. Cryptocurrencies appear to be near a hyper adoption phase, similar to that of the internet during the mid to late 90s, but that is still early in the cryptocurrency investment evolution, as we will explain. 12 of the 2,755 individuals of the Forbes 2021 World's Billionaire List emerged from the world of crypto. Scrolling down here, we see why we believe it's early but not too early. We see cryptocurrencies in the early but not too early investment stage, which is why we have emphasized investor education. The thrust of our view comes from global cryptocurrency adoption rates, which have, which have quickly accelerated from a low base. Cryptocurrencies have been following an adoption pattern similar to other new advanced technologies, such as the internet. For the remainder of this piece, we will discuss how advanced technologies have typically been adopted and why we believe that cryptocurrencies may be near an adoption inflection point similar to the internet in the mid to late 1990s. We can see on this chart, electricity, cell phone, automobile, color TV, internet, radio, all had a boom and bust cycle. Look at where Wells Fargo is predicting that we are at in the cryptocurrency space. This is insane. We are down here at the bottom. Imagine if you bought internet stock or electricity stock or cell phone stock in its early phase or early boom and bust cycle when nobody else believed in it. Understand what you hold. Understand that you're investing hopefully in uh, cryptocurrencies that have use cases for banking institutions and utility for banking institutions, okay? And if not, you're investing in meme coins, most likely you're gonna get rug pulled in the future when there's regulatory framework and your, you know, your crypto portfolio is gonna be worth nothing. Again, not financial advice, but make sure that you're doing research into whatever coin that you're personally investing in. Scrolling down here, the rest of this article reads, our view, cryptocurrency adoption today looks similar to the 1990s internet. While the technology behind cryptocurrencies is complex and use cases can be hard to visualize for those new to the space, data shows that the world is beginning to embrace the technology and quickly. According to Crypto.com, the number of global cryptocurrency users reached 221 million, I covered this in my last video, in June 2021, or just under 3% of the world's population. Look how small this is. Can you imagine when this number goes to 10%? 15%, even 25%. That's not even that's not even 50% of the world's population, guys. Just 10%. Imagine how much money is going to come into this market at 10 to 15% of the world's population. But anyways, 
Most impressively, it took only four months to double the global cryptocurrency population from 100 million to 200 million. Cryptocurrency adoption rates look to be following the path of other earlier advanced technologies, particularly the internet. If this trend continues, cryptocurrencies could soon exit the early adoption phase and enter the inflection point of hyper adoption. Similar to the technology seen in chart three, notice in chart three that there is a point where adoption rates begin to rise and do not look back. For the internet, that point was the mid late 1990s. After a slow start in the 1990s, internet usage surged from 77 million in 1996 to 412 million in 2000. By 2010, worldwide internet use had grown to 1.98 billion, and today it sits at 4.9 billion. Could you imagine if 4.9 billion individuals out of the 7.3 or 7.7 uh, billion people on this earth adopted crypto? I mean, I don't even know what to say right now. But that would be crazy. That's highly speculative at this point in time. But this is coming from Wells Fargo. Again, a major bank and institution in the United States is writing articles like this. Come on, wake up. They're not just whoever just wrote this. Right. They didn't just get paid to write this. They didn't just get like told to write this. This is this is here for a reason. OK, they are fully integrating everybody on their side of the institutional money about cryptocurrency right now. Guaranteed they're taking classes. I guarantee you they're learning about blockchain. I guarantee that they're revamping every single thing that they knew about the past way of doing things and they're fully integrating themselves into a new way of doing things and there is going to be a boom and bust cycle on the internet. I firmly believe in that. Now, you guys can take that advice or leave it. That is up to you. Do your own research. But continuing this article. We expect that cryptocurrencies eventually will follow an accelerated adoption path similar to recent digital inventions. Now, this chart is very interesting because we see here their time frame Wells Fargo puts out 2014 to 2042. We see down here the internet phase 1993 to 2021. Look at the steady growth. Look at where we're currently at in 2020, 2021 and 2022 for the crypto users right now. OK, there is so much room to grow to the upside, which is why by probably most likely 2025, 2030, I'm personally going to be out of crypto and most likely retired. Right. If we just get to midway of this red line where the Internet reached, I'm retiring, period. And I don't know about you guys, but hopefully your bags are built and packed properly with cryptos that have future use cases for banking institutions. Right. So <clears throat> look at this. It says what to do now. Be patient, be prudent, be careful, do your research. Again, this is all coming from wellsfargo.com. Going over LCX. LCX, I am extremely bullish on. My LCX bags are packed, not financial advice. Do your research on LCX. Do not sleep on this giant. Quant partners with LCX to advance CBDC settlement implementation. Scrolling down here, a couple of key highlights from this article. The agreement will contribute significantly to the advance of the banking and finance sector, particularly with respect to implementation and settlement of CBDCs, banking stablecoins, and digital securities. Quant and LCX will conduct research and work together to be integrated into the Overledger network as a key partner to transact and settle transactions and digital assets for community enterprise and institutional clients. I love how they end that with institutional clients. It's just hilarious. LCX is building a financial ecosystem for crypto and fiat currencies alike to become the new category leader in the blockchain industry. Again, key phrases, the leader in the blockchain industry. With the focus on the tokenization of assets, utility and security token offerings, and an advanced trading tool, LCX offers a range of digital currencies and is rapidly becoming established as a retail exchange with technology that can help other institutions launch their own digital assets. Scrolling down here to finish this article off, due to their expertise in technology leadership, Quant plays a key role in global DLT interoperability. Together, we are pursuing the goal of translating these expertise into further growth. Using LCX regulatory setup as a basis, in doing so, we hope to define a new industry leading standard that will open up the advantages of interoperable digital assets, says Monty Metzger, CEO and founder of LCX. This guy's future vision and, and company motto for LCX has completely made me bullish on LCX. I mean, if you just go to the LCX platform and website and read through the website, it'll blow your mind. 
They are fully integrated with the World Economic Forum. They are definitely up to something. They are doing business with big banking institutions. Watch and mark my words. When LCX becomes a, a $30 billion, $40 billion, $50 billion, $100 billion company, the price of LCX is going to appreciate so much it's going to be insane. And all these early adopters are going to benefit. Again, not financial advice, but I know that my LCX bags are packed. Anyways, finishing off this article on this, the implementation of CBDCs across the world is now a question of when, not if. Okay, this is extremely crucial right here. Key phrases is now a question of when, not if, though some key challenges still remain. Our technology is already playing a critical role in helping to overcome these challenges. And this partnership with LCX accelerates the process still further by giving financial institutions, commercial banks and end users in the financial sector, even more options to settle between digital assets, securities and and currencies, all right? This is from the lcx.com website. The last little part that I'm gonna leave you guys with is there are clear signs that there's institutional interest in the blockchain and crypto space, indicating that institutional capital will become increasingly involved in the cryptocurrency economy given the right conditions. The advantages offered by DLT, liquid valuation of otherwise illiquid assets, 24-7, 365, data integrity, and triple entry accounting, to name just a few, present too many possibilities, efficiencies, and opportunities to ignore. The question now is what will be the final trigger that will lead to institutional capital pouring into the crypto economy and in which jurisdictions? This is big. This is a conclusion from an article on the LCX platform. I'm telling you guys, look at this. DLT integration. What do we see here? DLT interoperability. I'm telling you all, LCX is going to be a major player. Do not sleep on LCX. Blessings to you guys. I hope that you enjoyed these gems. As always, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Reach out to me if you have any questions about the mentorship. Link is in the description down below. Blessings to you guys. Make sure that you follow me on Twitter where I constantly update people on price action and my personal analysis. Be cognizant. Be aware. Please be safe. Do your own personal research. I will see you guys in the next video breakdown. Everybody enjoy your weekend.